From the beginning of time, the devil, Satan, had been planning to destroy God's seed in the earth. He first tempted Adam and then tried to destroy his relationship with God. He first raised up Pharaoh when Moses, the deliverer, was born to try to destroy God's plan for the nations. When Jesus, the Savior, was born, he used Herod to try and annihilate the one that would save the world. The fight is not over. Today, millions are murdered in the womb before they have a chance to be born or even breathe so he can defile them and mock God. He fills their lives with fear and pain and causes their lives to be destroyed. The fight has always been for the seed of God and the next generation. which is called life because let me tell you something if those that are born of God there's a warfare that is waiting for you let me tell you something the devil already knew that you were awesome before you were born so he set up every trial he set up everything even before you were born he set it up to destroy the purposes that God has Send us free so we can experience the glorious liberty of the kingdom of God in the earth. Church is supposed to be the most exciting place to be, but unfortunately, it's not. And somebody said, Amen. Because young people would rather be at Aquafest, 50,000 of them, and being in a club on a weekend than coming to a meeting like this because there's no desire for the things of God. 
We taught people how to sign our Sunday morning church register, but we never taught them how to get hungry for God. And you know what happens? We go to church as long as our parents oblige us to go. But when the choice is left to us, the desire has not been put in us and there's no desire for God. Come on, that's the truth. Yes, young people. Because if we really had this desire, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Where are we going to walk into a church on a Sunday morning and the young people are yelling and they are shouting and they are excited. No, but we got to say, come on now, lift your hands. Come on. Everything has become mechanical because we are not walking in the liberty whereby Christ has made us free. Somebody talk to me here. There's no, there's no love experience. You see, the only difference between Christianity and every other religion, every other religion is based on do's and don'ts. Christianity is based on a relationship. We teach on a Sunday morning do's and don'ts. Come on, people. You go, you get five ways to do. S seven steps to make but who teaches relationship with oh come on now so we got a whole generation give me a book tell me what i must do tell me what i mustn't do worship leader tell me lift my hands worship leader tell me sing worship leader show me how to dance but do we have no passion that is birthed out of the inside of us because of the love that we have for a living god and i believe god is restoring first love and you know how he's restoring it? He's restoring it through brokenness. He's restoring it through pain. He's restoring it uh, to the people that have been through stuff. Uh, when you cry those tears alone at night, uh, when you don't know what to do, no one to turn to, nowhere to go, it's in those moments that God is restoring first love. When you can't go to your mother, you can't go to your father, you can't go to your pastor, you can't go to your leader. In that secret and in that quiet place, God is going to meet with us again. I believe that God is bringing liberty upon the church of Jesus Christ. Because I believe that you need to be free. I don't want you to grow up to being my age. The ripe old age of 37. And suffer with the things that I had to suffer. Growing up being a Christian and not being free. Growing up being a prophet and having hang ups in my life. I want to help you before you enter the warfare which is called life. Because let me tell you something. If those that are born of God, there's a warfare that is waiting for you. Let me tell you something. The devil already knew that you were awesome before you were born. So he set up every trial. He set up everything even before you were born. He set it up to destroy the purposes that God has for your life. Let me tell you something. If you did not know, we are in a war. God said to us this morning as we were praying, he said, Zion just has brokers trade on a stock exchange. He says, I am calling my sons to trade on the stock exchange of the spirit. For what? For souls. In the natural, they trade for sh with shares. In the spirit, we trade with the anointing. Oh, come on now. And I said, God, help me understand what it means. He says, I place a deposit of the anointing in you, Zion. I place a deposit of the anointing in you, and Luke, Pastor Luke, Pastor Terrence, Jerome. I place a deposit of the anointing inside of us. And God says, now you're my brokers. You are trading for this generation. How, how do I trade? When I exercise my anointing. When I step into a meeting, I exercise my anointing. I trade in the realm of the spirit. My anointing, when I begin to prophesy, we are pulling people out of hell and we don't even know it. I am trading for the souls of men. I'm using the anointing to remove burdens. To just show the, oh prophet Zion, the anointing removes the burden. Then let me ask you, then why all the people that went to Aquafest never got saved on Saturday night? God is waiting for you. He's the anointing in you. Working through you that will set this generation free. But how can we step into the fullness of God? The Bible says if the righteous are scarcely saved. Would our glum faces that we pitch up would at youth meeting. We ain't saving nobody baby. Nobody wants the God that you advertising. The God that you advertising looks boring to me. If I have to look at your face. The God that you are selling, the Muslims don't want your God. 
Walk into a youth group on a Friday night. They don't want that. But if we give them a miracle, signs and wonders, Jesus. We give them a Holy Ghost, fire, glory, power, Jesus. Uh, then they can't help but say, how can we be saved? But we got these hang-ups. We say we're free. Dance and show us how you dance and how you go to the left and how you go to the right and and how you dance in the river on a Sunday, but on a Monday you are hung up. On a Tuesday you're in depression. On a Wednesday you want to kill yourself. On a Thursday you want to break the whole world down because you are having a bad day. On a Friday you want to get high on crack. And on a Saturday you want to get jiggy with it. And we do this every week. And we're living in a cycle. Because everybody's too afraid to tell the truth. The church is too afraid to tell the truth that we're actually bound. You think you're free, but you actually have chains on you. You think you're free, but you actually have things on you that you don't even understand. You're doing things that you don't even understand. You're thinking things that are not your thoughts. You're doing things that you, you cannot even believe that you did it. How many of you have ever done anything? Did I do that? You know that guy that, that uh, Urkel used to say, didn't I do that? I mean, you do, you send that message and then I did I, you looked at that website, did I do that? <laughs> Come on now. It's in the secret matters of the heart that God is concerned with. It's in the secret things that's in the secret place. Lots of things will happen in the secret place. Not only would God be unveiled, God will unveil you. We all walking around carrying masks, hiding, pretending, and we are bound. I want to be Prophet Zion. I want to be Pastor Luke. We're going to have glory. We're going to be revivalists. Yay, I'm going to take nations. I've got a group of people. I've, I'm, hello. But if you can't help yourself, how are you going to ever help anybody else? If you've got things that you are fighting, if you've got wars that you still not defeated and things that you have not defeated, how are you going to become a soldier in the army? Oh, come on now. And God began to help us even up to last night. And, and, and let me tell you something. I'm, in a, I'm a believer in the cross of Jesus Christ and what Jesus has done for us on Calvary. I am a believer. Good evening and welcome to SABC News. Once again, we are bringing you the news at 8 o'clock. It is the 16th of June and we have breaking news. A group of violent young people in Soweto were stopped in their tracks today as they were about to cause a violent uprising. Thankfully, there were some white South African police present and they opened fire on these young people before they cause havoc in the city of Johannesburg. Right now, join Rian van der Venter as he is on foot in Soweto.
It is June 16, 1976. It's 7 o'clock and I just woke up now. I'm getting dressed for a new school day. I take my lunch my mother made to me. And as I go to school, I hug and give her a big kiss. I'm walking down the road as I do every morning. As I see my friends, I decide to walk to school together. At 8 o'clock I got to school on time. It's a normal day and I'm sitting in the classroom and I feel something's not right. What's happening? What's happening? I hear sirens outside the classroom. There's a policeman is here and arresting my teacher. They're taking her away. What's happening? I run outside with all the other students. We begin to march to a land of stadium. No Afrikaans, no Afrikaans. My friend is shouting those next to me. More and more students are shouting around me. They're shooting. The policemen are shooting. I start running. <gasps> a bullet just hit me. I fall over over. Oh my God, this pain is so bad. I can feel the life going out me. My blood is flowing in the street. I'm afraid. I'm in pain. I'm dying. I'm Hector Peterson. And I am free.
ready for a suddenly experience right now. Prophecy in Joel chapter 2. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Joel. And he began to prophesy. He says, and after this, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Say all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Are we seeing young people prophesy? Not yet. He says your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see visions. When lost in a young person in your youth group have a vision. I'm not talking about a vision to build your church. I'm talking about a heavenly visitation. I'm talking about angels appearing in your bedroom. I'm talking about waking up tomorrow morning. Join back your curtains and angels ascending and descending. I'm talking about the, the wheel within the wheel. I'm talking about the power of God. Oh my God. After this, listen, listen. The prophecy wasn't after this. After what? After the devil and has his seen with you. After the devil has taken you to drugs. After the devil tried to sabotage your life with suicide. After this, tell your neighbor afterwards. After this, I pour out of my spirit. You see, I did not come to speak to a congregation. I'm here for a holy nation. I'm not here to speak to an audience. I'm here to speak to an army. I said, I'm here to speak to an army. Mighty God, I said I'm here to speak to an army. I said I'm here to speak to an army. I hear the Lord say, blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm on his holy mountain. Declare to the nation, it's time for war. It's time for war. War, 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 war. War against principalities. War against powers. War against rulers of wickedness. It's time, it's time, it's time. It's time. We might not look like pastors. That's okay. We might not look like prophets. That's okay. We might not look like apostles. Neither did John the Baptist. Jesus said, he said, when you heard of John the Baptist, you went to go look for him in the wilderness. What do you expect to see? Many of you walked into this room uh, expecting something. I want to tell you, if you are expecting, that means you are pregnant. Because when somebody said that they are expecting, that means that they are wounds are filled with something. And if you walked in expecting right now, I want to tell you, welcome to the maternity room of the spirit right now. to do something God wants to do something in this generation but you know what God can't do it God can't do it you know why we're too low our worship is too low our preaching is too low don't bore me with your preaching it's too low so in the book of Revelation the Spirit of the Lord came to John and said, John, dude, come up. This is a time for the generation to come up. I want to tell you it's time for you to move past where you are. Tell your neighbor, come up, come up wherever you are. Come up, come up. God is about to do something fresh. It's a time for you to move to another dimension. It's time for you to get out of your low place. Psalms 24, verse 1, 2. It says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You heard the pastor preach. But verse 3 and 4 says this. Listen to me. It says, and this is the generation that will seek the Lord. Oh, Jacob. 
Catch this. And this is the generation that will seek the Lord. Oh, Jacob. Now, if you only know who Jacob was. If you only know who Jacob was. Jacob was a supplanter. He was a liar. He was a thief. He was a deceiver. Sounds like any one of us. Sounds like me. But catch this. This is the generation that will seek the Lord. Oh, Jacob. And if you read in the Amplified, it gives a description of that generation. It said, this is the generation. The generation that will say, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. 